So welcome and thank you very much for speaking to me about your wonderful and not at all crazy ideas. Thank you so much for inviting me again. Um, you are the founder and CEO of Hive uh, and Hive is a platform that enables um, people to connect, to execute tasks, uh, to gain uh, both value, but also earn money in executing these tasks. But what we are going to talk about today is different, complementary, uh, but also very intriguing. Machine to machine communication, machine to machine transactions, machine to machine economy. What does that mean? Um, when is it going to be um, impacting us? Let's start there. Sure. So I'd resume that with, with the following. I'm, I'm not sure if this is like a, a known concept or something like that. So I don't want to pretend I invented it. But the, the way I see it is the following. There's two types of automation. There's uh, process automation, which means, for example, you know, um, having a machine that picks apples um, or just uh, having, you know, like a Roomba that cleans your room. Uh, and then there are systems automation, which for me personally means connecting several of these different agents who do a specific process automation and having them work together collaboratively. And that's a very powerful thing because once you create a systems automation, you can actually create an infrastructure of automation which means that all of a sudden, instead of automating a task, you could automate you know, uh, an entire activity, an entire industry. So the simplest example would be agriculture. Instead of having you know, uh, a tractor, uh, we now have, let's say, three components. We have uh, a tractor, we have uh, something that sprays the, the crops, and then we have something that um, basically waters the crops, right? So we can say, when the tractor uh, passes the 100 meter line, then we will automatically start uh, to water the crops for 15 minutes. And then we are going to wait for 30 minutes and then start spraying the crops so that we don't get bugs and stuff. Um, and the result is that we have completely automated, you know, this particular type of crop uh, in a very simple example. Um, so th this is for me, you know, what the actual future of machine to machine collaboration means. There's a lot of ways to actually achieve that. Some of them, you know, depending on the industry, they might require some piece of hardware or they can be purely software. But if we are able to actually achieve that, I think that we might be headed towards, you know, an, an autonomous future, an autonomous society. And in that context, there's also the fact that a universal basic income would make much more sense from the simple perspective that all of these machines would be paying, you know, a certain tax for the fact that they exist and they work as normal humans would. And from that tax, we can then generate an actual basic income. Uh, that, of course, opens an entirely different uh, yeah. uh, path of uh, conversation which is how you design a society uh, that includes th those kinds of incentives and uh, uh, what are the uh, roles uh, of humans, not necessarily or exclusively as economic agents, but what is the purpose of uh, 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 an individual human existence as well as of a human community in a society like that. But that will be for another uh, uh, episode and another conversation. Uh, staying on the machine-to-machine -machine, uh, component, I find it uh, interesting and of course it is a question of granularity and of uh, different scales uh, uh, where you look at uh, what component uh, is a process, what uh, is a system. Uh, in our body, for example, uh, we have organs, we are an organism, but also, each of our organs is made up of cells and these cells communicate. And if we look at the cell, the cell itself is made up of organelles. Uh, it has uh, mitochondria, it has DNA, it has all kinds of processes going on in the cell itself. So it is kind of a fractal um, 
series of uh, uh, ever more uh, complex uh, views. Another example, uh, not in bi biology, but uh, in our current uh, economy and technology actually is uh, what uh, uh, Elon Musk uh, uses to say. He refers to the Gigafactory as a Tesla product that at least today is not sold or licensed. I believe that could happen actually if uh, a, a competitor came to Tesla and said, could I buy or license a Gigafactory? I think Tesla would, would say yes. Factory as a service. They, he says, uh, the Gigafactory is the machine that builds the machine, right? Correct. So he sees that uh, as, uh, as, a, as a unit. Now, how do you look at the feedback loops and the necessary improvements that processes and systems can achieve and must achieve in a competitive scenario and the governance that enables um, the updating or upgrading of a given process or a given system. Do you see that as something that an autonomous society that you describe will, able, will be able to achieve? That's a tough question. I, I'm, I'm not sure if we will necessarily, you know, get there from the get go. But I mean, as you said, you know, it's a machine building machines, right? So it's layers upon layers. The question is probably more as to at which layer should we stop? or at which layer does the current level of our technology stop? Um, so I would say for now, the, the most important thing is creating an, an initial infrastructure, right? So even, even in blockchain, we have layer ones, which are blockchains. We have layer twos, which are applications that build infrastructure on top of the blockchains, like IPFS, which is storing files. Uh, and then we have layer three, which are the actual applications. In this particular case, we don't have a layer one. A layer one would mean that, uh, at the very least, uh, to some very generalistic extent, artificial intelligence or machines or simply agents uh, would be able to communicate with one another so as to achieve a common task. So I guess the, the, the most important thing now is how do you make that communication um, exist? And also, how do you make that communication be understood by all of the different agents that could be a part of this? So you'll probably need like a translation engine that makes the connection between agriculture equipment and maybe shipping equipment because um, you take your crops and then you put them into a car and you want to ship them and all of this should theoretically become a process in the end. And so the process of making the crop is one thing and then the process of shipping it is a different one, but they're both on the same layer. So after this first layer is completed, regardless of how fragmented it is, then we can start having second layers whereby people come and make a system of systems and they take the crop system, they take the shipping system, and then maybe there's a third system, which is uh, the inside shop system, and they connect them all together. So that's the layer two. I cannot even imagine what the layer three is, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so after developing this intuition into a more structured kind of thinking, you didn't stop. Yeah. You uh, started developing a platform that would actually be able to embody and enable this vision, and that is the future of Hive. So how does Hive enable this machine-to-machine -machine autonomous society? Sure, so that's basically the Hive protocol. Um, and how it started was um, quite small, actually. It started out because we needed to verify automatically that someone would sign up for a particular product or they would download it. Um, and so the, the, first, the first thing the protocol did was transform tasks into uh, things that were self-verifiable by design so a human wouldn't have to do it. And then we figured that that's 
kind of a specific thing to do. So why not try to do it in a generalistic fashion? And so we figured a, a way to actually allow, you know, different agents, different machines to communicate with one another um, to achieve a common purpose. And so there's a lot of differences there because the, let's say you have drones, right? So you have two drones and you want to deliver something. Um, so the drones have certain characteristics such as the autonomy they have, how fast they can go, um, the fuel they need, where they can recharge it, where they have to go. Um, after they deliver it, do they have to return to a specific place? So you have to take all of these characteristics, which are quite specific depending on the exact agent that you're using, and turn them into variables that can be you know, constructed as generalistic variables so that they can make a communication between them. Um, because the exact same thing that two drones do when they deliver a package um, is the exact same thing that a, a rocket would do when it goes into space and it accepts a task autonomously because it has some fuel that's left. Um, so the idea is we basically just enable a part of the layer one. Uh, realistically, it's not complete at this moment because, you know, it, it's a very, I don't know, cutting edge thing right now. But at the very least, I think that probably 80 to 90% of what we commonly refer to as a process automation nowadays uh, could be taken as an individual object and then connected with a different object to create an initial system of objects. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Certainly, uh, Hive uh, has uh, a, a very uh, ambitious and um, far-reaching uh, roadmap uh, to deliver on yeah. uh, as we are recording this um, it is going to be uh, launching the first modules the first Correct. components uh, uh, on uh, a roadmap and then um, sooner or later the machine to machine components are also going to be coming Correct. certainly um, uh, since uh, part of uh, the uh, platform is going to be oriented towards developers. Correct. Some of these developers could resonate with the vision of machine to machine that you just described. So what is the best way for developers to engage with Hive uh, in a few months when everything will be in place and you will be able to start accepting people who want to build on Hive? Sure. So uh, just as we were talking, you know, last time, is people can build their own platforms on top of Hive, but they can also build their own apps. Now, those apps can uh, either be completely separate from Hive and you just plug them in, such as a lending application, Ave, just as an example, um, or they can be applications that make use of certain modules and then build on top of them, such as an application that makes use of the protocol and adds some extra features. Because you have the protocol, but maybe someone comes and builds a specific app that automates agriculture. Someone else comes and builds an app that automates drones and so on and so forth. Um, so developers can basically just come and connect to the protocol. They understand how it works. And just like people build DeFi on Ethereum, they could build systems automation on top of the Hive protocol. That's pretty much how it would work. Well, Tudor, thank you very much. Uh, and good luck with uh, the next steps uh, of delivering on the promise of your vision and Hive. Thank you so much for having me again.